afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Pearl Dane. Master of Propaganda here of the Reich, Defender of the Fatherland, but of here to exciting one message one on Simwaski Winter. In the cold, in the dark, something terrible will happen. In the North, we got a hit of fighting for the Soviet Union for the glory of Comrade Stalin. And the 87th Rifle Corps versus the MW Spanky fighting for the Wehrmacht for the Reich for Deutschland for the Kampfgruppe Preiskat. With Jäger Armour, German Mechanized and Mobile Defense, all infantry bullets here by way for both sides. No machine guns, no armor, no nothing. Double gun is there for Spanky, double conscious for Ahito, both sort of hanging with, well, towards the approximately closest fuel points within the near units. So we got a large infantry push towards the east, it seems here, from uh, Ahito. This conscript looks like. Uh, Spanky's uh, kind of seems a bit unsure what to do. There you go, more are following up. More are following up. Looks like he will hit for both few points here, Mr. I hit you. Going for the southern and the northern one, of course, going for this one. He sort of expects it's more likely for his opponent to be nearby, and thus he's putting sort of the actual combat in from there. He's basically essentially thus not expecting Spanky to make a move towards that point. And certainly it's easier for a northern player to consist of southern few points from say southern player in particular the Wehrmacht than it is with this one since well there's a building right here covering quite nicely where see it it's not quite so easily there and it doesn't necessarily have quite the same uh, defensive capabilities right here we are seeing that hit within the first few moments active sort of throw off Spanky there and generally I prefer not going towards that building if I have to I generally always prefer this one here in some Moscow winter personally again due to the reason I mentioned it's a lot easier for some to rush and contest it easily compared to this one which rather means this one is easily the more advantageous one sure this one's going to be closer but considering how easily your opponent can rush for it and hold it away from you that tends to sort of at least in my opinion render it not very valuable you might of course grab it later on but generally it's not going to get so much out of it right away but comes there versus Pioneers, we're now seeing one Concord running up, two Gunners, this is 240 manpower, tying up 480 manpower. That's not exactly bad there, if I hit to that and last the rest of his forces, grab the rest of the map in the meanwhile, because again a large chunk of his Spanky's forces are held up here behind a small boat. Some damage has been done, we are seeing some Russians bleeding out, but overall, I mean he's denying Spanky fuel, he's denying Spanky map control and overall territory there. So any sacrifice there, so I'm sure something I hit is more than willing to make. Of course, there we go, can't see flanking against the Canadiers. All of a sudden, things are looking even more dicey here for Spanky. He's got an MD-42, though, that should help him sort of control the map a bit. You know, keep I hit a bit on the back foot. There we go, building, but again, if he just then moves towards here, but there's only one window, just gets into the ditch, it won't be so much of an issue. But again, getting over here would be the more, well, sensible situation. There we go, double Canadiers pushed away by the conscripts, ultimately again, Two conscripts lost, one gun did lost, but again, fuel point denied. And he's also basically dying it up here. Overall, at the moment, I hear to us with a few simple movements, able to contain his opponent quite nicely here into Moscow Winter. And that, again, is why I really don't recommend you going for that one if possible. Because, again, your opponent will rush for it if you start in the south, and they will try to do the best to keep you off it. And it's not particularly difficult for them to do that. That's really my biggest problem. It's not difficult. It doesn't require any sort of massive effort. This now belongs to the people and the MD4 do not quite serve. They've got pioneers still flame for not bad, but uh, in this case they're no longer in the building, meaning a lot easier to basically focus down on the five countries. They go pushed away. Another attempt here failed. He's probably better off, you know, trying to make a more solid push for the western fuel point with pioneers and so on instead. And that didn't quite happen. So once more, Spanky is in a bit of an awkward position. He's trying to gain some fuel here, whereas I hear to currently got two fuel points. The fuel is flowing into his fuel tanks, stores. I don't know. Either way, he's getting a lot of fuel. Spanky is, and we got 36 versus 16. That's a 20 fuel difference that can quickly become sizable if Spanky doesn't do something to rectify it quickly. We also got a maximum up here, so he's got support weapons, he's got engineers laying down mines as well. Good, good. He's thus making it more difficult for Spank to attack and maneuver around on the battlefield. Very good. He's finally sort of gotten the point there, MD42 is not by way moved up support the gun it is, by the way, he's finally 
wrestle the fuel pawn there away from Ihitra's control. And it's only taking a bit of time there, and the loss in doing so have certainly also hurt a bit. We got. I like to make a nice company up there for well Spanky done, next. Going to trying to harass a bit, but overall not succeeding again. The Russians but overall got the better position here versus Spanky's men. Grabbing points, MD4 two moving towards the centre. We're seeing here Spank X sending out one of his support weapons on its own. Very risky move there into the village where he nerves their Russian infantrymen. So there's certainly a bit of uh, desperation over here in the first opening moments there from Spanky when he's sort of basically using MD4 to like that when he could be easily lost. Pantagon is following up here. Nice offensive infantry could work out quite nice. Can certainly pressure I hit his troops if utilized properly. Half tech could also be used for to reinforce the front line, could be up flame first, I would love to push more aggressively, maybe sort of you know overcome this initial sort of situation that I hit us sort of imposed on him. So far though, I hit despite the fuel advantage has to say rush for armor vehicles. That could be to the advantage here for Spanky along that last quick rocket here against the Maxim. Not the best position there, and there we go. Rocket did a lot of damage, leaving many men quite well dead. But there we go. Panzer going to be around here for the Kampfgruppe. Sturm Gewehrs in hand. Vorwärtsmen. Beyond that, not a lot else. Not a lot else. Points being grabbed. MD42 there. Should be done. Seems to be with the engineers there. Spanky is a bit on the wall path now here versus I here too. No units in the back to build anything up. We got Gunnelisa versus Kanska. There you go. Two Kanska versus one Gunnelisa. This court. I hate Spanky in this case realizes he's not going to win that. He doesn't have any doctrines. They could actually sort of turn things around. They say like to elite troops with a stun grenade. So he basically retreats there. No doctrinal choices probably from any side so far. No doctrinal choices. Four two needs to be up swiftly here before the Russians get in positions. No Molotovs probably here for I hit to. There we go. The man who rush the building still suppressed, take some damage. Then again, heavy cover there, building cover versus units and well boat. Only light cover there. Could work out well there for the conscripts since they don't have to go about suppression. Though we got Spank they're moving all of his infantry. Pioneers as well. Panthers are operating, grabbing points, and we finally got the take over there for I hit to. Send them into this game. Again, the double fuel pump control. Has vastly benefited I hear too. I mean, he's got 80 fuel even with building that. Spanky's got 60 fuel having built that. So, in that sense, I mean, he just got a nice lead. He can go for T70, he can go for a half, take 50 minutes and 6. I mean, he's got a lot of issues, options there against uh, Spanky. Though, of course, one mistake here was basically allowing head cover right for the building, which can be sent by the Pioneer to like to push back the conscripts. So, I mean, it's not like all perfect for I hear to here. Yeah, definitely some trouble, some tribulations here. Spanky's Panzer is continuing to operate here on the far west. Grabbing points, Game got moves up the centre here, could flank around, do some damage there. Not bad, not bad. Some better attack options here from Spanky, some more movement, some more aggression. And there you go, Constant and a half of on the way for I hit to Spanky's getting a pack 40 himself, the Panzer of the Canon. That should do the trick a bit here. No doctrine though, no doctrine. I suppose in one option you could just ru go for mobile defense, rush out of Puma. That's sort of a uh, option. Or you could try, try for a half and lay down some regal mines. I mean, that could also work out decently. But of course, the question is will Spanky actually go for any of those things or will he have something else in mind here? No tech up there though. It's hard to say. And Panzer was there, been forgotten for the time being. It would be good if he got to grab the fuel point there with them. MD42 by not moving up to support the front line troops. I think they could have helped here versus the incoming troops there from I hit up. Looks like it's a bit too late there. Pioneers pushed away. And there we go. Half to moving up. We got the A mount almost done there for I hit up. Almost. There's a bit of trouble. MD4 needs to go as well. Oh, he's going to lose it. Oh, he chose poorly there. He chose the wrong door. He chose the front rather than the back door. And in this case, acting up, handing over an MD4 2 right there to Ahito. Definitely bad. Definitely bad. No response here still. Besides the pack 40 to the A half track. Whatever gain to Spanky's man's game will probably quickly be seen off. We're getting more pioneers there. But not before Spanky decides to take up. 
bit late with that I feel, could work out there, could work out then again a Puma might be initially a better choice as well deal with the A half to keep any sort of light vehicles on their toes and then sort of use that sort of, sort of harass aggressively push his opponent while he then takes up and goes for his medium armor to support to for it to support really since the Puma is not exactly a main light combat vehicle the mines there again are here to preparing for the fight ahead thinking ahead, good good several mines here now the more the merrier, except if you're the opponent, in which case it's pretty bad news. But almost done taking up, you got a main push into the village center. He's been lost here to Aihitus. A Russian man there, including with MG42. The half tech easily allowing him to reinforce it, and of course not having to retreat any troops while grabbing weapons. So that's good, that's good. Looks like he's going to try and catch that a half tech there with a pack 40 and maybe some grenadiers. The enemy is taking what we have secured. Pack 40, rather slow to shoot there, at least the panic gets set up, that's a bit unfortunate, there we go, men lumping up, in this case though, Spanky was surprisingly lucky, he didn't lose a lot more there, since he was basically just moving all of them onto the mine, that was surprisingly lucky, Panzer, then he go, oh, Shaiji wasn't paying attention, they were suppressed, and that's mean, of course, they have terrible accuracy, meaning now they can't they're barely with any damage, as you might know, it took them out, so I mean, really, you know, that's something important, they came out about suppressed troops, they are close to combat ineffective. Following up on that success to sort of break off Spanky's assault in the centre well of the village. Well done there by Hitsu, well done. Field gun there on the way, still no toxin on the other side. He's building the support armor core. A bit surprised he didn't go for mobile defense in Russia, a Puma. So he's trying to deal with it. Of course, he might have other plans in mind, which could be good, but uh, map control wise, though, Spanky's in a rather dark spot. But there we go, straight into the pack 40. And there's simply not enough room for it to get out. He's tried to overdrive, but he might be too late. And there we go. Second shot. Cooks it up. Small victory here for Spanky. A small victory for Germany. Pack 40 crew there. Swiftly escaping again. Well, as swiftly as they can. So, rule most of the map currently is Aihitus. Following up with a T-70 light tank there. Look, cancelled it. Interesting. Wonder what I hit you could be thinking there. More mines, he's even mining in the ice here. So, Sergei, how do we hide mines in ice? Here is the trick. Uh, I forgot. Either way, it works. Just do it. Getting more gunners, they're not planning on companions on this anymore, there, Mr. Spanky. Pushing forward here, we got a large assault there, supported by MG42 Pack 40s. Black machine guns and so on, maximum name before 2 remains here, covering, covering up the eastern viewpoint. Enemy forces are neutralized. Two push away the there, we got mines covering the roads, lots of mines there for my here too. Wonderful, wonderful. A sector has been cut off. But so far, Spank having again minor success, but ultimately tends to sort of end up lacking something there before he gets thrown out. Being a rather rude customer, if you will. Of course, it could be word here that the church is, uh, has been demoed and thusly he's not sending any troops into it. I mean, that could be a very nasty trap there for my hero, which could punish Banky quite severely, but of course it isn't from our perspective, so of course it could be used with that machine gun to sort of cover the area at least a bit there, versus whatever I hit it could be able to pull off against Spanky. Another half check though from my hit, so another half check, what could he be planning with that? I mean he's got the resources to do it, it's not like, you know, it's completely crazy, but it certainly strikes me as a bit particular. Of course there's also the other facts, which against Spanky doesn't have a lot of fuel. Now again, I hit to know, so again, you know, it's not like he has to worry too much about medium armor either, of course, in this case, Spanky has, as one of the few players actually, so he tried to still to push for Sparma Core, not relying on anything else, that's good. It still will take him some time before he gets anywhere with it. And meanwhile, though, grab as much territory. I think he's again on MG4, if you can get it up there, you can actually control the fuel point and a bit the surrounding area, which would make it harder for I here to do what he wants then. He's not actually gotten up a mortar of his own, the 82mm there. He's shooting MG4, two being pushed back slowly. Rav grenade here might just be able to finish it off. Half track moving up, another A mount, another crowd mower. Out, 
Kennedy is still being absolutely well. Rock grenade! Didn't have much of an effect. And that looks like a squat there wiped out. Tragic Lords right there for Spanky again. Interesting enough, he's not making a move towards the fuel point right there. Instead, he's sort of moving towards occupying the center of the village. So they can't last long up there. I mean, there's essentially no cover. They're exposed to a lot of Russian infantry, so they have to fall back and stay with the pack 40 here. You get trying for a Stug here, a Flak Panzer or a Panzer IV. Stug would certainly be the swiftest option, and with an arm machine gun, could also help a bit better the infantry. Of course, he might just sort of aim for the Flak Panzer or the Panzer IV instead. Another Panzer squad there for Spanky, though, so it looks like he has forgotten about them completely. That is nice to see, that is nice to see. Too bad he seems to have forgotten about the field point. So time here for the Mick Gimenez's current situation. I hit was very much in control of the map. He's got some machine guns, mortars, field guns. He's all sort of handling the map quite nicely. And for some reason, Spanky keeps going for the harder to take field point rather than the one that is easier to take. And to certain extent, also easier to hold, in particular for us and an enemy for it too. To support the position, and that's rather hurting Spanky, and it's also allowing our hitter to have a lot more fuel than he otherwise would have, which is definitely not to Spanky's advantage either. So there's definitely something that needs to be sort of looked on there from Spanky's perspective. He also needs to choose a doctrine. Mobile defense could work out here. Jaeger armor, mm. and German mechanized. I mean, could work, but I don't think it's sort of getting what he needs right here. I mean, mobile defense is an example, probably good at least just for calling up the Puma or Storm, but also you know, Panzer tactician. Counter-attack tactics would be quite a good help there for a Spanky as well. So a few forks there, but I should get out some medium armor. Panzer, I think, would be initially a good choice, but he also needs to follow up with a Stug, just to be sure against any sort of heavy armor concentration that will arrive from our hit to most likely, in which case, of course, the Stug will be very much helpful. But I'll hold the few point here, set up some bunkers or machine guns, something just try and hold it a bit better. You know, try to push it against a hit from several angles instead of just the usual straight line at the few point, get shot down. It's not really something that works out in the longer term, and essentially it only helps, you know, I hit it by feeding his men a lot of misexperience. As for I hit it, more mines would always be good. I mean, holding, sort of solidifying the territory further, taking up at this point, going for some T-34s would be an excellent choice as well. Maybe a should five something else supported. I hit two should also consider a doctrine of his own. I mean, they can all sort of work for different reasons. Heavy assault guns, bombing strikes, guard infantry, guards infantry. I mean, overall, there's a lot of guards from there, but also howitzers, bombing strikes, and shock troopers, IS-2s, and KV-8s. I mean, they can all three work for different reasons. Overall, just sort of how I hit essentially tends to sort of play the match here, I think. Though, if he does try to you know, place a long to fewer cylinder, then he's just going for the heavier calling armor. That could actually be to spank his advantage. That might just allow him to sort of get back on the field, push out some armor, and that way actually establish some kind of armor advantage before I hit to finally gets out some heavy armor of his own, in which case, Spanky might just be able to pull it off. In fact, Spanky should probably be hoping for that as long as he himself then knows how to take full advantage of that and counter it hard. So, let's return to the fight and see what actually happens. And see what actually happens. Panzer Grenadier there. And there we go, my engagement. I hit a rebuff by the Grenadier. M5 half track there. Or stem sinting there due to it being with the AA mount. Rolls out. Don't know how the many of those the Russians had. A bit hard to say. There we go, gun is engaged here. Under heavy fire. And pushed away, some minor losses they inflicted. Field gun moving up the SIS 3. There you go. Shock rifle chosen. It very much looks like I hit has Fiero Syndrome here. Will Spanky though be able to take advantage of it? I mean, he's getting close to the Panzer form. Could do a lot of damage with if he hands his cards correctly and supports it properly. Assault here could work out nicely. I think he should actually have some attack from here. Get behind across the ice and sort of strike a hit from as many points as possible. Mine detectors. 
a half tap moving into the village centre as well. Gunners are dealing with, but still being pushed back. Mortal set up support here, nice position. Covers a nice chunk of the village. And there we go, going for the fuel point. Finally, Mr. Spanky, finally. Yes, took him almost 20 minutes before he got there. More mines, in fact, he's laying down mines right next to his other mines. Bit of a risky move, but certainly if someone just keeps driving ahead, that could do a lot of damage. It's not all bad. It's only quite some slightly more inexpensive mines. If someone were to do that with Tiller mines, I'd say that was definitely overkill. Shooting there. But wire to cover the victory point here from the enemy, it seems. An interesting decision there. Bunk, I think, could also have done the trick. Go here, half tech flying away. Supporting pack for trying to up passes pressed. Plus the pin, Pioneer's moving up support. They're good here on the A half tack. Pioneer's not moving up support the Panthers. Oh, there we go. But a bit too late, they have to sort of drag their feet through the heavy snow first. Giving the engineers more time to do some serious damage to the Panther gun. So that's a bit awkwardly done. Panther falling away for Spanky, so he should soon have the other advantage over on here too. Will he actually be able to utilize it? Fuel caches right here would be a good choice as well. Would help offset some of the fuel difference there between the two. And you know, with medium armor out, as a former court, that would also help you know, get more in medium out faster. And certainly, after that, Panzer Force would be a really good choice of fuel. In particular, since from our perspective, we know there's going to be, you know, eyes twos and such out. And certainly, at this point, Spanky should always be expecting. I mean, his opponent had a huge fuel advantage, yet he's not pushing it with a lot of vehicles or tanks. Which at this point should make Spanky think, all oh right, my opponent is going for heavy armor. I need to prepare for that. I'm going to need some Stugs. So hopefully after the Panzer IV, there'll be immediately a Stug as soon as he can. Now, otherwise, I mean, I hit him. Might actually be able to pull off his move here. Grenadiers, more mortars, no further enemy fighters, no pack 40s, no fuel caches. I feel that's a bit of an awful expenditures there of manpower from Spanky's side, but he should be using more sort of things to help control the map. A push armor against his opponent. Ultra mines there, by the way. A half take here. Engineers taking losses. Being crushed and shot down here by the Panther IV. Lots of munitions. There's still no doctrine for Spanky. Still no doctrine. Almost got the engineers. Can he get them? Can he get them? No. Gets away. Sergei gets away. Panther is pushed away. Minimum health there. Minus shoot up there, Panda 4 finished off the engineers. Looks like something pushed away, but not sure. Oh, this was the field gun. Cheeky eye hit up. Once more, a few point briefly lost has been regained there by Comrade Eye hit up. Pioneers in the fire there from the A half tech, can't scoop moving about. Too much for our plan overall. Spank is not got anything to consist that seriously. And most the mortar might be able to help a bit. But even that's pretty much exposed here to whatever I hear to might want to throw at it in return. Paying the Panzer IV, good work. Pack 40 also pulling back there. Interesting on the other hand. Not what I'd expect, but there you go. We can soon get in the stoop he wants to, and I certainly think we should get it. I hear to begin to float a lot of resources again, basically through a syndrome, he's stopped caring about anything else, he just wants the eyes to sink, sort of at least in his perspective, crush his opponent without much resistance, and certainly at this point, Spanky would have been a hard time there. And I certainly think he's gone for a few too many gunners in the longer run. More Panthers or caches for fuel would have been better, and again would allow for more armor faster, which I think is then going to be a priority there versus I hear to. And certainly, no matter what, would also be able to take advantage of the huge gap here in timings before he can get some heavy armor. And if Spanky had been able to make, or is able to rush out some armor there, I mean, he could already at this point, you know, having pushed maybe I hit back to his face and he's controlling more of the map. Instead, it's not quite there. There you go, field gun. Ooh, might be able to grab it and turn it against I hit it. That would be a huge boom. But the very least, deny it to I hit it. 
work out. That could work out. That assault here, but could we stop them on Maxim? MP42 still to get Minx by the southern fuel point. And Panthers here making short work of the conscript, closing in on Vection 2 1. And there we go, the air half tech annihilating his flame for a pioneer, spanking his men are taking punishing casualties. Almost locked out by the motor. Air half tech might just be able to finish them off. No pack 40, no Panther 4, no student, nothing to support. There we go, wiped. No Panther Faust, and there you go, Panther von Gages. Nothing to really stop it. Of course, the anti tank gun is gone, or the field gun is. That's a small attempt here, but it does hit a mine there. It does hit a mine. The hitter's mining certainly paid off there, ensuring that the armor rush wasn't quite as effectful. Got the maximum, got the maximum, and there we go, though. My hitter's being to call up the heavy armor. The IS 2 has arrived. The Josef Stalin 2. They also existed a Josef Stalin 1 tank, but that never really saw any action. Certainly, we've stayed on to the IS-2 and actually put that one on the battlefield. There might have been a small number of IS-1s that saw some testing action, but beyond that, really nothing. And calls up KV-8, the flame for potential support further. Now, this is definitely going to be problematic. Instead of, say, going for Stoop, when again he should be expecting, you know, some rolling armor, he gets another gun of these, thus effectively costing him the manpower for Stoop. Guys, two rolling hit it, gun easily pull back. Nothing to support the field gun, his pack 40 there is far too away. Good hit there, they shoot to the half tech instead of the bleeding eyes too there. And then we go wiped, no chance there. Pack 40 there opens up, Panther 4. Far away here from the fight, fighting. And he had a Stu key, might just have been able to put up more resistance versus the IS-2. And also the half second so on, but instead, you know, he's allowing our hitter to slowly move ahead. And he's all lost one field gun then, also lastly lost him one tool to deal with the IS-2, but also the KV-8 here, which is rolling up along the other road here. Crushing over telephone poles. Chaos, bit of mayhem. Nice rear hit there. Panther fast fails to penetrate. Keep it burning away at the pack 40 crew. Panther 4, not really much of a either. Oh, looks like trying to avoid the eyes to here, but it's not really succeeding. Ah! Main gun destroyed, trying to blitz, trying to blitz. And he's not removed the mines from the road. Ach, nine. Almost got the KV-8 there, but he's going to move. Yes, yeah, straight into the mines. Lost the Panzer IV. And he knew the mines were there. He should have. He spotted them previously with his pioneers from the mines people, but then seemed to have forgotten about them. And they're going to send it back. Artillery quick clears out the field gun. Now he's calling up the stew when it's, you know, already a lot more problematic for him to spank to deal with it. Though in some senses, you know, he somehow managed to blast the force a bit, but still, things are quickly disintegrating under the high splash rounds there of the IS 2. Shattering for infantry. And tank alike. There's not much really here that spanking and throw at him. And there you go, he actually sacrifices a gun of the escort to try and steal here with the eyes too. There's a certain sense of desperation there for spanky. Victory point by the way, also looking pretty grim. 47 versus 475. Spanky's really had a hard time holding that again. Basically, strength it came down to this building. Pack 40 here about to get cleared out again. And he's about to wreck it, ensuring that Spanky can't recruit it. And lastly, knock out the eyes too. The enemy is taking what we have secured. So there he goes, Sturm Geschutz, as Fungi. And he finally chips his adoption in his mobile defense. I suppose, I mean, the Puma supporting the Stuk could work out. The Puma could spot for the Stuk. They have the same range and of course the Puma might be a bit faster thus getting tight weak point and that could also benefit the Stuk. But of course the question is will Spanky actually go for it? Also we actually see mobile uh, defenses counter tactics actually being utilized for once. Bit rare to see but when players, or well, at least half of them tend to use it, it's basically when they're already in a lot of trouble and they basically figure well you know it couldn't be any worse rather you know well I could only make this better for me otherwise. You know, I mean that's basically how counter attack tactics works. It basically makes a good push, a great push, because you can take territory a lot faster than you always could have. 
it basically allows you to maybe take, you know, twice as much territory in the same time as your others would have, basically using this one. So I'd say it's uh, a rather potent ability if utilized properly. And there you go, yes, calling out the Puma, but will it be able to save the Stromgeschutz? Will it be able to save Deutschland? Shootout. Very low on victory point. I mean, he's forced the IS2 back. That's a small victory here for Spanky. Too bad now he's just allowing us to not shoot the infantry freely with his machine gun. You're not pushing harder. Oh dear, Mr. Spanky. There you go, though he charges in the eyes to against the Stug. Stug needs to build distance. We got constant moving up with anti tank grenades. He's still building out. He's taking the hits. He's tanking it out. And there you go, Puma rushes in, gets heavy damage. Main gun destroyed. And knocked out. This is going horribly for Spanky. And. There we go, GG. A brave effort by Spanky, but was rather undermined by, I think, a series of choices, in particular the first one of basically where to fight, and again on some Oscar Winter. This is generally not the point to fight for. As the Wehrmacht, it's really here you sort of want to be fighting despite north or south, of course. Your opponent can't so easily block it away from, you know, overall hold it. That was rather what happened here. Overall, it cost Spanky a lot of territory, a lot of time, gave a hit to quite a fuel bump. That definitely not aids Spank. And then of course it came sort of the second mistake, he just kept pumping up planet this when they probably should have gone for another thing to just build up fuel. And lastly, of course, you know, once his opponent actually got his arm and this is fuel syndrome actually came to fruition. Spanky had to be a little because he just kept popping grenadiers up. A mortar, which doesn't really stop an eyes too, run, say getting up maybe a fuel catch or something, you know. Sort of build up there, get some stuff out, and also way too late doctoral choice there for Spanky, which definitely didn't hurt him either. In this case, uh, he took cut away with his fear syndrome, partly to again to have Spanky racked it, played. Had Spanky perhaps been a bit sharper, realised what was going on, he could have pushed harder with fuel catch and also to build up more fuel and punish our hero. Instead, it didn't quite happen. Spanky's reaction was simply too slow in this match, and overall, I hate to get away with it. So there you go, a bit of an important lesson there. Again, you know, always try to keep in mind, you know, how much fuel do your opponent have. And again, you, while you might not be able to pay full attention, you can always, you know, judge some things. And again, how many fuel points have you had throughout the points? Do you have any fuel caches? And does he have to get any armor up? Because if he isn't, and you're pretty sure you're paying attention to the inductions when they sort of load up the match, he might just be going for heavy armor, in which case you need to sort of flood the field with as much medium armor, preferably something they ought to deal with, say, heavy armor out easily, you know, and sort of try to strike your opponent before he gets up the heavy tank and sort of, you know, augment an already strong field presence with the heavy armor. If you can sort of push it back before that, you might just be able to win the match. Sadly, Spang, of course, they did not go for that, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gave you a better understanding of the game. If you did, want to subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. And if you feel like supporting the propaganda cast, consider donating. Donations are most welcome. There's a link in the video description. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed and hope to see you all tomorrow. Bye.